morning, my friends. Today, I am gonna show you something different. Today, we have to change the drain valve on a water heater. And you're saying, what's so different about that? There's plenty of videos out there. Yeah, but I'm gonna show you how to do it without draining your water heater. <laughs> That's impossible. How am I gonna do that? It's vlogger's magic. Stay tuned. I'm working in a very tight space today, so I don't have a whole lot of room. So I'm gonna do this, and then I'll get the camera down there for close-up shots. But right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that right there. That's the drain valve on your water heater, okay? It's dripping and leaking. It's kind of a thing with the plastic ones. So if you can get the commercial grade water heaters that have the brass uh, drain pipes, they usually stand up a little bit better. I'm gonna show you how to not only change that out, but how to do it without draining your water heater. Now everybody else is gonna show you to turn off your water, drain your water heater, change it, and then fill your water heater back up. So what you're doing is like, this is a 50 gallon water heater. We're gonna drain out 50 gallons, so we're gonna lose 50 gallons of water. Plus I'm gonna have to wait about 50 minutes for it to drain. And then you gotta wait for it to fill up. And then you gotta wait for it to heat up the water before you have hot water. How about if we just bypass all that and change it out without draining the water heater? And I'm gonna show you how to do that the Wagger's way. Remember, this is a Wagger's exclusive. So this here's our drain valve. And you use it when you wanna flush your water heater out or if you're gonna drain it to, to replace your water heater. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it is dripping and it's dripping from back in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out and we're gonna put in a new one, a brass one. Because once we take this out, water's gonna to wanna to gush out. The first thing you wanna do is have your new valve completely ready. In other words, you want it out of the packaging and the thread you want either wrapped with Teflon tape or in this case, I use pipe dope. And that's on the threads. Make sure that's completely ready first before you do anything else. You need to turn off the water to the water heater. So on your incoming cold water line up here, you're gonna have a valve you need to shut that valve off, okay? That's gonna turn off the incoming water into your water heater. Now in this case, we have a ball valve. This has been replaced recently. Uh, you might have a gate valve. So just, whatever it is, turn it off. And you need to make sure it's all the way off. So this is a fairly new valve, so I know it's probably working fine, but if you have an old valve, especially if you have an old gate valve, that's the kind you know you keep turning, turning, turning until it's off. Those get corroded and they don't shut off all the way. For this to work, this has to be completely off. Right now, your water heater is under pressure because you had water coming into it and it's putting pressure in there and then normally it goes out. So we made sure that no fixtures in the house are turned on. We've already told the occupant, do not turn anything on. Don't flush a toilet, don't open a faucet, don't use your water uh, dispenser in your refrigerator, don't do anything like that. For this to work, you can't have any fixtures open to let air into this system, okay? So now that we got it under pressure, what we're gonna do is we're gonna release that pressure and create a vacuum in here. So this is your temperature pressure relief valve. It could be on the side, some of them are on the top, but they all look like this. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna open that. And when you open it, before I open it, I'll give you a little warning here. Before you open it, you're gonna hear a gurgling sound of water rushing out, which is fine, because this should drain out to a drain somewhere, okay? So listen up. And you want to wait a few seconds, let that pressure get out, and then you're going to close it again. So once that pressure's out, you'll know the pressure's out because it's going to stop making that noise. And then close it. So technically what we did is we just created a vacuum now inside. So now when we remove the valve down here, hopefully there's a vacuum and it won't let the water rush out. Now that you have the pressure taken out of the water heater, I'm going to let you take some pressure off yourself. I know you're so stressed thinking, oh my God, I've watched the video this far and I haven't pushed that thumbs up like button yet. <gasps> oh my God. All right, so I'm gonna sit here and wait a couple seconds while you take your finger, go down there, push that thumbs up like button. And don't forget to subscribe while you're down there. There you go, thank you. Okay, let's get back into it. I had a little bit of a glitch during filming. Didn't realize that the camera 
got bumped over to time-lapse mode. So it kind of blazed right through the whole process of changing out the drain valve in about five seconds. So luckily, I have another water heater here, same issue. We're gonna change the drain valve on this one. We're gonna do the same process. We're not gonna drain the water heater first. So let's get into it. We got our valve ready. Now just remove the old valve. This is gonna be a pretty quick process. Once you get this valve out, you need to get the new one in right away because some water will come out. So you just wanna be prepared. Now this one had a little bit more water come out than normally. I could tell as soon as I was removing the old valve, it started gurgling. In other words, it's letting air into the system. A lot of times you don't get that. You pull that valve off and you get very little water trickling out for at least the first 10 to 20 seconds before the air starts getting in there. So, and then just go ahead and put the new valve on. You don't need to go medieval on it, but you do need a snug. Now this one doesn't have, like I said, it has a little flange here. We could have popped this off, put it on, put it on there, but because of any leaking water, I didn't want too much air getting into the system and then have it just start gushing out. So what we can do though, is we can take our, we can take a knife here, we can cut a slit in it, and we can just fit it around like that. And that just gives us the finished look. If you want, you can put a little, Seal it under that to hold it on there if you like. And that's it. Go ahead and turn your water supply back on. Now you notice this one has a gate valve where the other one had the ball valve. So luckily this gate valve was in good condition. It shut the water off completely. So a lot of gate valves don't do that. So in that case, you're not out of the woods yet. If your gate valve doesn't turn the water all the way off, you can just turn it off at the meter coming into the house as long as you get the whole water shut down. Turn this open. And then on gate valves, what I always do, open them fully, get them fully open, and then turn them back about a quarter turn. And the reason being for that is if in the future you ever have to turn it off, if you have it fully opened and it gets some corrosion in there, you only have the off way to go. This way we can kind of turn it back and forth to free it up. So always turn it back about a quarter turn. Just make sure you have no leaking, which we don't. So once again, we have a, another valve exchange without draining the water heater. Just a couple things I want to mention to you is one, because you're working with an active water heater that has hot water in there, uh, wear some gloves. You can just use a, you know, the kitchen style gloves that you would wear when you're you know, doing dishes. You just want something that can protect your hands from the hot water because some water will come out and in the event that air gets in there faster than you can get the valve in and it starts gushing out, you don't want to scald your hands, okay? Your water heater hopefully isn't turned up so far and you're going to scald yourself, but you want to take that precaution. Also, be prepared that as you take the valve out, if the water just starts coming gushing out, you're going to want to be able to put the valve back in. So hopefully pull it out slowly. If you find out that it's not sealed, doesn't create that vacuum in there, go ahead and stick the valve back in right away. Okay. If in the event you can't, one thing I have is I always have available a pipe here. This is just a um, standard uh, uh, vent pipe that you would see like on the top of the water heater or you can use it the kind you know for the back of your dryer. And all I do is if the valve can't go in, it comes out, I just hold this up over the opening to catch the water and then I have the other end just going safely outside. So that way you don't have to worry about water getting everywhere and ruining everything. You just want to be prepared. 
Okay, you wanna make sure that the TPR completely shuts off after you've used it. Sometimes when they get old, they get calcium buildup in their hard water buildup and they don't close fully. So you can kind of check wherever the outlet is. If you have a floor drain in your garage where the water heater is located, just check the end of the discharge pipe. Um, in this case, mostly here in the Las Vegas area, they're drained to the outside and we have a um, exit point like this, usually right on the wall next to where the water heater is located. So you just want to make sure water's not coming out of there. If it is, you're going to need to get that thing shut. So one thing you can do is tap it with a hammer, just, just a few little light taps. And when I say light taps, I mean just tapping it, don't you know, smash on it. You just want to tap it to make sure that it closes. If that doesn't work, maybe open and close it a few times and see if that helps free it up. If not, Unfortunately, you're gonna to have to replace the TPR valve. All right, now, one thing you can do instead of using the TPR valve to create that vacuum is after you shut the water supply off, instead of opening the TPR valve for a few seconds, go in the house and just open up the hot side of a faucet for a few seconds. You know, count one, two, three, you know, and turn it off. You know, three to five seconds is about all you need shut it off. That does the same thing as opening the TPR. What you do is you're just taking the pressure out of the system and that way you don't have to worry about monkeying around with the TPR valve. Okay, let's compare everyone else's way to the Wagger's way. Well, everyone else wants you to drain the water heater. That'll take about 45 minutes. Then you have to refill it once you got the new valve in, so that's about another five minutes. And then to heat up that new tank of water, that's going to take about an hour. So total time involved, an hour and 50 minutes. Now let's compare that to the Wagger's way. To drain it, well, we didn't have to drain it, so that's zero minutes. Since we didn't have to drain it, we don't have to refill it, so that's another zero minutes. And then to heat the water that we drained, which we didn't do, so yeah, that's another zero minutes. So the extra time involved our way, zero minutes. Well, I'm glad I was able to help you save a couple hours of your time, but what are you going to do with that extra two hours you have? If only there was some videos you could watch. I wonder where you could find those videos. Hmm. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. In the meantime, this is Brian with Wagger's General Services, Las Vegas, Nevada, saying good luck with your projects.